What I'm going to show you today is a strategy I use to consistently find winning ideas inside of sales funnels. And this is the method I really turn to when I look at a funnel and I just have no idea what to test. And that's exactly what happened just a few months ago with a client. They came to us with a falling conversion rate, rising ad costs, and fewer leads coming through the door every single day. They wanted us to get their conversion rate from 3.9% to 6%. And I was confident we could deliver, but I didn't know how exactly we would do it. I didn't know which tests would yield the conversion rate that they wanted. So we got to work with some immediate, obvious optimization. And within the first month, we got it from 3.9 to 4.4%, which was great, small improvement, but far from the 6% that they wanted but I was fresh out of ideas. So I spent an afternoon looking through user recordings and heat maps to see if any ideas would spark. And multiple blaring optimizations came to light and the very first one brought the conversion rate all the way to 5.9% just shy of their goal. And the next one brought it to 7.1%. Both optimizations I would have never found if I didn't watch user recordings. But user recordings, heat maps, and scroll maps won't yield you any winning ideas unless you know how to use them. So today I'm gonna to watch real user recordings from my site live and show you how I come up with winning ideas. So if you've never used user recordings before, the two most popular tools are Microsoft Clarity and Hotjar. I personally like Microsoft Clarity. It's completely free and there's no cap from the amount of traffic you can get from it. And it actually has a uh, faster load time than Hotjar, so it won't slow down your site. So when you come into Clarity, there's a dashboard with a bunch of different metrics, right? Like if you have JavaScript errors and dead clicks, I don't worry about all that stuff too much. I do look at it occasionally. But the two main things I look at are the recordings tab and the heat maps tab, both of which are very, very valuable. So how do we actually do this? Because if you've ever watched user recordings before, it can feel like a bit monotonous. You're just, you're watching people do basically nothing. It's hard to decipher what change to actually make because of that. So one tip I would give you is really twofold. You have to kind of use your intuition. You, you, you wanna watch user recordings and see if you see people get stuck anywhere, which we're gonna do right now. And then secondly, we wanna isolate certain metrics, right? So today, one metric I've noticed on my website that's low is the percentage after opt-in that actually books a call. And I know it's low because I see KPIs of other clients who have similar funnels that have like an 80% opt-in to call ratio, but mine is lower than that, right? So I wanna see why that is. So what we can actually do is we can use this filters tab up here and we can go into the URL section and I can find people that visited the URL that has this word claim in it, which is a, a part of the URL on my booking page, right? So this means people came to the site, but they exited, right? Cause I put this as the exit URL. They exited on the booking page, which means they opted in, but they didn't book a call, right? So now I can watch these and you can see the start and play right here and I can see what is going on. So one helpful tip is to turn this up to four X, two X, whatever speed you like, and you can hit skip inactivity. And we can watch this and we can also, if we want to, filter or sort this by the most clicks. So you can go clicks high to low, which can be helpful to see the most engaged people, right? Like why are the most engaged people getting to that step but then not booking a call, right? So right here, this person had 36 clicks. They visited four pages. They're on the site for two minutes and 45 seconds, but they exited before booking a call. So let's watch this and see if anything stands out. So this person opened the pop-up, right? They didn't quite opt in. So if that's a pattern I'm noticing, I might wonder why, right? What's going on there? It's kind of common on most sites. You'll open it, you'll get off of it, you'll go back to it, right? But that is something to consider, right? If it was super long, that might lead me to say, hey, maybe we should make this simpler. It's a little too daunting, but so far nothing too crazy is popping out. This guy wants to see every single FAQ. And then he goes back and he finally enters in his details. New page loads. And he almost immediately bounces. So if I'm looking at this, I'm thinking, okay, what happened, right? Because he had intent. He got to this page and granted, 
the first page isn't super clear about the second page being an opportunity to book a call, right? So there is something there that we, if we wanted to just increase the booking rate, we could make that clear. However, again, we have clients that run a very similar funnel that have an 80% opt-in rate that they do it the exact same way, right? So something there is going on. Now, one thing I, I would hypothesize by looking at this, if this was a client's funnel, is I'd say the headline here is ready to find lost profit in your business. Everything on, on the pages before, like if I go to my site right now, I don't think I say that anywhere else, right? So that's telling me it's not super cohesive, right? So right here it says claim your funnel audit, right? The headline up here on the top is we help creators turn more of the website traffic into sales with funnel architecture. So like nothing there says find lost profit in your business. Then all of a sudden the booking page does say that. So it's not cohesive. So I should do a split test where the booking page is cohesive, right? It says, you know, last step to claim your free audit or, you know, claim your audit to figure out how you could turn more of your visitors into sales, something along those lines. So it's cohesive, but let's move on to the next video. So this person starts by watching the video, they're playing with the controls a little bit. You can't actually watch the video you're watching. There's a lot of like privacy things, obviously, that clarity has to do like blur out their details and so forth so that it's completely anonymous and there's nothing weird there. One thing I'm noticing right off the bat though is people are actually reading this site much more than common and they're inter interacting with FAQ, right? That person interacted with the FAQ as well. That seems pretty common. And it's actually, I know from heat maps, one of our most clicked elements, and that's also pretty consistent. So that person got to the pop-up, they didn't exit out of it right away. So that's, you know, now not a pattern, which is a helpful tip. If you notice patterns, right? Like everyone gets to this one question and then bounces, then you know, you know, to a kind of a high degree of certainty that they, uh, you know, that, that's something that you should look at to optimize. So here they enter the information into the pop-up, they get to the next page, and then there's five minutes of inactivity, right? So they, they obviously left this page, they weren't interested, right? So if you think about the reason why somebody does or doesn't take an action on a website, there's reasons why they wouldn't, which is really fears, uncertainties, and doubts. Those are the kind of the negative things we want to remove. And then to make it simple, the, the, the main positive reason, the reason why they would do it is motivation, right? So they either have too much of these things or too little of this, right? So here, I don't think there's a lot of fears, uncertainties, and doubts. I mean, the, the fear might be like, oh, I'm just gonna come on the call and get pitched, so I could address that, right? The But you know, even that, I don't think that's really the real reason. I think it's more of a motivation thing and a cohesiveness there, right? They, they thought they were coming for one thing and then it says ready to find lost profit in your business. It's just a little bit confusing. Dan Kennedy says a confused mind doesn't buy, so it's definitely something I'm gonna test. Let's move on to the next one. So that person did open the pop-up. They've opened it twice, but they have not opted in yet. They're watching the video, scrolling through the site. They've already been on it for four minutes. Looking at reviews, once again, checking all the FAQs. Left the site for eight minutes, came back. Opted in, get to the page, and then that's it. Nothing really else to it. Man, everyone is interacting with FAQ. That might mean I should add some extra questions. I could do user surveys, right? And that, that, that's a good example of a test or an extra piece of data that I could get after looking at this, right? Like, okay, what are people looking for? Why are they looking at the FAQ? And I could ask a question, you know, I could run a hot jar survey. That's actually the tool I would use in this case. Run a hot jar survey and ask, is there anything holding you back from requesting a free funnel audit today, right? And just see what the responses are. Like, oh, I don't really understand it. I'm not sure what's included. You know, I, I don't have the funnel, right? Whatever the, the common questions are. And then I can address those either in copy or in the FAQ on the page. So he gets here, he actually clicks. Oh, he just clicks on the right there. So, you know, right there, this is a Calendly embed. And this is one bummer thing about Microsoft Clarity is it doesn't show those things, embeds. Yeah, I think if you did a high level calendar, uh, they might show it. That actually be a potentially good reason to, to use that calendar instead. Um, but I would love to see if people are interacting with it. It doesn't look like they are because I think it would still track their clicks. But we have seen, actually I know for certain, high level calendars do show 
which is great because we can see people like, oh, they got to this question on the application and then they bounced, right? So like, oh, maybe there is something right there, right? That's adding unnecessary friction. So I'm just gonna keep going through these. I'm just trying to see if there's any other patterns. And if I was doing this for a client, I would watch you know a hundred of these and just see what things pop out, right? This person's on mobile, so you can actually filter, right? And do mobile or desktop only. But again, we're looking for common things. And to give you a few examples of what we found in the past that have been winning ideas. So I mentioned two in the beginning, one that brought that client's conversion rate from 4.4 .4 to 5.9. That one, this, this is like one of the coolest things I've ever noticed. Uh, the, the button on the page opened up a pop-up. On the pop-up, how to survey, like a type form, you know, your, your traditional eight question, 10 question survey. And people would start the, the survey, right? They'd get like five questions in, but then they'd be like, hmm, what page am I on? They'd click off of it, go back to the page, and then they'd open back up the pop-up, but it wouldn't save their progress. So we tested it, and if we brought the survey onto the page, it did save their progress. So those people that came back to it and didn't want to start the survey again, if we just had it to where it saved their progress, we would convert those people. And it worked flawlessly with, again, going from 4.4 to 5.9. That's like a, th I think it was a 32% increase in leads by literally just taking the pop-up off of there right, that I noticed on Clarity Recordings and bringing it to the main page. The second thing we changed is we noticed certain questions in the survey people would get to and then they would leave. It was the common ones like, what's your full name? What's your email address? What's your phone number? So underneath all three of those, we either tried to decrease the fears, uncertainties, and doubts or tried to increase the motivation. So for instance, on what's your full name, we added your information is 100% confidential, right? Because in this market, people care about that. Underneath your email, it said, so that we can send you your roadmap, which is what they were requesting. And then underneath phone number, it said, so that we can send you over a hundred plus hours of valuable content, right? So we gave motivation and we reduced fears, uncertainties, and doubts. One thing I do on mine is on my phone, I say, don't worry, we don't go crazy with marketing emails, right? That's a fear or an uncertainty of like, if I put this in, am I gonna get spammed? Right, we're, we're trying to relieve that, right? One thing again, if, I, if this was a client that I was doing this for that I might do as well, is look at what do the people do that actually do book a call, right? Is there a difference, now that I've watched 20 or so recordings, is there a difference between people who did book a call? Do they interact with a different part of the site that maybe I can make more visible on the landing page? But again, we're looking for these sticking points and we're trying to hypothesize why people are getting stuck there. It's a really cool process. The other part of this that I think is just as valuable is heat maps. So if I come here, I can go to one of these pages and look at a heat map. This one's a little funny because it, it opens a pop-up. So it like has this on there the whole time. I can't close that out. And it's saying the number one uh, clicked place is people closing the pop-up. So they open it and then close it. Uh, that might be you know an indication that I should test adding the form to the bottom, right? Rather than having on the pop-up because it's just an extra friction point of opening it, closing it, going back to it, right? Um, and we could have all of the buttons anchor down to it. So that would be a good test idea. Here is pop-up versus form on page. So that's number one. Number three is the video. And then if we keep going down, we'll see what other things pop up. People are interacting with a little bit about us a lot. And then FAQs, right? Like I mentioned, they're pretty popular. And if we change this to mobile, we can see if this is consistent or if, if it changes at all. So here we see the pop-up isn't as popular. Uh, this is where it gets a little bit weird. It's showing a bunch of code. There must've been a JavaScript there, error there or something. But when you see things like this, I go back to my site and like, okay, if I check it on mobile, is that error actually real? And I don't see it there, right? Um, this is a pretty cool plugin, by the way. It's just a little mobile tester and you can test this on different screen sizes. So there's like, you know, I can go here and I can change the device, right? So I can try it on like a Galaxy phone and see how that changes things, right? Oh, it's thinner, you know, things, but things still look decent. So cool little plug in there. Um, so yeah, mobile looks pretty consistent. I typically don't use heat maps as much as I use recordings. Another thing you can look at here is scroll maps and this will give you good test ideas. And I can already tell you right now, oh yeah, I'm actually doing pretty good at this. Um, so one common thing we're looking for here is like how, what percentage of people get below the fold, right? So here we have 75% of people get here, which is actually pretty high. Normally on most sites, it's 50% or worse. So you can check your site. Mine's 75% right now. That you know means pretty, people are pretty engaged 
when they get to the site. But this line right here, this average fold line is very important because more times than not, you want this button right here to be above the fold, right? If you don't have that, you can easily see a 10 or 50% improvement by just moving your button above the fold. So that is good. So that's taking account all the devices and showing you where the average is. So if it was like right in the middle, you might want to try and move that up. But 75% of people get there, 61% of people get here, and then 55. And there's a really slow, gradual drop off, right? Like 49%, 47, 40, 35 and then 25% of people get all the way down to the bottom. It'll also show you area maps, which will show you how many people actually interact with these things. Right, they're clicking on these different areas. Uh, you can see like, okay, um, I I'm really surprised actually, one thing I'm noticing is that like this button right here has no clicks over this timeline. And granted, my site's not a super high traffic site. Uh, it's very high intent, but not super high traffic. But look at this, this is actually very impressive. Down here at the bottom, 30% of people engage with the FAQ, right? That means I should probably spend more time because I haven't looked at those questions in a long time and try and optimize those further. So install clarity, look at your metrics, figure out where the drop points are, right? If you have an e-commerce site and people are adding the cart but they're not checking out, look at the cart, figure out if something on the cart is driving them away and start asking these questions like, what are they thinking about when they get to this step that is keeping them from going to the next step. So to give you one final clarity test that we found that was a massive improvement, a 100% improvement in conversion rate. I should have mentioned this earlier, but I completely forgot about it, was a load time issue. So we watched clarity recordings for a client who has a webinar funnel, and we saw that their pop-up to opt in for the webinar took anywhere from 10 seconds all the way up to two minutes to load, which is an obvious just conversion killer, right? People are gonna bounce when they see that. So we changed that. We hired a custom developer to develop a custom form and build that so it would load instantaneous and not use the webinar hosting's uh, built-in form. And conversion rate went from 10% to over 20%, cutting their lead cost down from $41 to $18, which just shows you how powerful these tools can be if you use them consistently and if you're looking for these little things and if you're asking the right question to figure out what winning ideas you can find. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, YouTube thinks you'll enjoy this one as well and I'll see you there.